So when we begin, um, I just want to take like maybe uh, three minutes each, and if each of you guys can just tell us, we have all understand that there's testimonies all over this room, but um, what was the life like for you? Why did you come into Transformations? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, my story's a bit different than most people in here. I come from a really good family. You know, my family, my parents and my extended family are all amazing people, but um, yeah, just from a young age, just had a distorted belief system about myself and went down this wild path and then, yeah, it was just years of prison and drugs and destruction and um, I'd been out of prison about six months and I'd been on the drugs every day um, and I was just going to end my life like I'd had enough, like I knew right from wrong but um, I couldn't make the break, you know, I couldn't get out of it and um, I was just going to blow my head off by the end and Dad said he found out about this program um, and he said, will you give it a go? I said, there's not much else left to do. i will spend the rest of my life in and out of jail or end it. Um, yeah, and I come up to Transformations and I didn't know it was a Christian program and I was filthy. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I come up here, I was filthy. And um, I used to be pretty wild fella and um, Dad was like, oh, what happens if there's fights in that? You know, and Tina was there, we're down the hall and she's like, oh, don't worry, Terry, we'll look after your son, you know, and I was like, you got no idea, woman, you know, like, <laughs> I'll show you, yeah, but, um, yeah, like, my life, I'll, I'd be dead, and I nearly died heaps, and I'd pray to die, like, I'd had enough, I'd pray to God, so just let me go, I'm done, you know, um, yeah, but here I am, I'm alive, I believe. Awesome, come on. <laughs> Same question. Yeah, mind my voice, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, for me, you know, similar to Ash, I grew up in a Christian family. You know, my mum, um, my mum's Christian, my dad's not. And, um, yeah, as we um, grow up, we always get distorted images and, you know, distorted thinking. I, I was easily influenced by my peers at school, um, leading after school as well. So I would always try and um, do the next adrenaline-seeking activity for me and that uh, eventually led to my addiction you know what I mean I was always trying to push the boundaries go one up every sing every single day every single weekend I always wanted I always wanted more you know what I mean um but coming into transformations I've found what I was looking for you know drugs isn't the answer you know what I mean um only answer is the Holy Spirit and Jesus so yeah come on that's Sorry awesome my boys but yeah <laughs> thank you that's awesome Yeah, um, similar type of story to Ash and Alex. I, um, I had good parents, but um, I found out when I was six that I was adopted, and I guess I always felt different than everyone else because, you know, you're adopted, everyone else isn't, and, um, you know, so like that distorted image of yourself. And um, so I tried to fill that void with drugs and alcohol, and, um, and then I'd do things when I was drinking and using that um, I was ashamed of, you know, I was ashamed of the things that I did to my parents and um, that just that just increased the the need to, to, to try to take drugs and you know um, before coming into transformations I'd I'd lost everything um, I was in hospital with four broken ribs on both sides and from blackout and um, drinking metho and that's where my addiction eventually took me and um, you know, um, went through the program and um, learned about consequential thinking, which, um, you know, really helped me to think about what I was going to do before I did it and what I, what I think about what I was going to say before I said it. And, um, yeah, and I found, I found a place where I belong now. You know, I feel like I, I belong in transformations. I feel like it's a big family and, um, yeah, I love it and I get a kick out of... Um, had a given back to, to a program that saved my life. That's great, man. Very good. Um, so uh, my name's Hwani Hedemeyer, um, for those who, who don't know me. Um, I'm a New Zealander. I'm a Kiwi. I don't know if there's any fellow Kiwis out there. Come on, give it up. Go to All Blacks, by the way, uh, Saturday. Um, for my story, it was um, a, a deposition, really. Um, my father was an alcoholic and my mother was a gambler, so, which is uh, my two addictions. But I was raised um, separately uh, from my actual family. Um, so I had a whangai mum and dad, which is basically somebody who took care of me, and I had my own parents on the other side. One family was love and the other family was uh, really quite abusive and not there. 
So it was, um, for me, it was um, a distorted image of who I was. Um, and my whole life I grew up um, believing that I was a mistake. Um, my mother even told me that, you know, if I, she had a miscarriage before I was born, and they just reinforced that, you know, if she had had that baby, I would never have been born. But one of the breakthroughs that I got was actually here when the first conference that I was, and one of the guest speakers was talking about God, and how he said was that God doesn't make mistakes. And when he said that to me, it was sort of like uh, the answer that I was searching for. So in, in his eyes, I was not a mistake. Um, and which, which, is, which is true for everybody. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. I'm so blessed to be here, um, actually sitting here on the stage. Um, when I came into the program, um, like everybody, I, I was just totally broken. I'd separated from my wife, uh, my children, and um, uh, I don't have access to Centrelink or, or any funding or anything like that. Um, I was blessed by a man by the name of Dan Smith, who I believe a lot of people know. Um, he paid for me to enter into Harvey Bay um, for, uh, f for a month. And um, after that, um, I got to see, meet Tina. And um, I'm just so blessed for Tina and the program and transformations that she just saw something in me. And she said to me that day, she said, I want to journey this with you. And she said, let's journey together. That's great. And so here I am today, That's sitting great, on this stage. Come on. That's good. So what was life like before you came in, and how did you find just the, the initial stage of transformations? Um, well, life for me growing up was really good. Like, I uh, was raised by Christian parents and a really good family. had a great childhood and... Um, like Alex, I was uh, easily influenced by the people around me. Like, I really struggled to fit into um, society. Um, I felt like there was something um, that I was missing. Um, I felt like I wasn't uh, funny enough. I wasn't um, pretty enough. Um, I wasn't... Um, I just didn't feel um, like I was just uh, fitting into society standards. And then when... Um, the people that I was hanging around with, they introduced drugs into my life and at first I'd, I didn't know what I was doing until I was already doing it. And it really just filled up that hole that um, in my life that I, I thought was missing. Um, when my partner went to prison, like I fell into um, a massive depression because I was very codependent um, on him and I ended up just uh, using the ice to just be able to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, for anyone that's been a, a ice addict, it's so quickly to go downhill. You think you're a functioning addict, but before you know it, um, you've lost your job, you've lost your friends, you've lost your family. Um, and then, you know, and in, in the end, you pretty much just lose your house and, and where you're at. Um, Fortunately, my parents stopped enabling me and found transformations for me. And in the initial stages, uh, very much in the first week, like I, w I wanted to leave, but I didn't even have a voice to be able to talk to my leaders. And I really, really wish that I had um, because I really struggled through that by myself and I just kept bottling everything and bottling everything. Um, and what was important for me was to just become honest um, with myself and what was going on and just try to be real to the people around me. Um, I didn't reach out for that help and I, I really wish that I had because I think that that would have definitely helped me in those initial stages. Awesome. I think, um, I think something that's significant about transformations is, is it's, uh, in, its, in its essence, it's not a program that you can jump out uh, into stage one, into stage two, going into stage three. Um, although a lot of us think that that's a good idea and we've got it and, uh, and we can go that even right now there's fruit here that, that says when you complete um, this program to its fullest, when you go all the way through the program, there, there, there's a better life, there's fruit, there's consistency, there's substance that comes. I, I remember I came in the first time, Boxing Day 2005, and uh, Mike had come over, and uh, I think it was like two days in, we'd just gone through the holidays, four people in the house, 
at that stage and a bird and a dog. And, uh, and Mike said, so are you going to stick it out? And I'm like, nah, bro, three months and I'm gone. I'm just here to get healthy and then I'm going to go get married and have a house and, and, and I'll share more of my story. But uh, I just want to ask, maybe, maybe just randomly, we can pass the mic around. Um, what was the biggest challenge that you found in the program and how did you overcome that challenge? Um, Come on, Stu. Def- definitely um, awareness tickets. Um, so bookings, getting booked. I did not like. I did not like receiving awarenesses, and um, <laughs> I used to try to go and see me HS and, and and say, you know, this isn't um, this isn't fair, and all this sort of stuff. And and he'd just say, just sit with it until Friday, and um, you know. So I just learnt to just to sit with those um, those un, you know, that injustice and. Um, it was pointed out to me by Pastor Mike in a, in a process group that um, Jesus was persecuted and that he would, what, what he went through on the cross was, wasn't, wasn't fair. And he, Ash just said, you're not Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know I'm not Jesus. Well, Keep I was going, pretty, that's good. Oh, no, that's good. No, um, you know, and um, he just encouraged me to own all my bookings in stage three, and and I and I did that, and um, you know that that was a big challenge too, but you know it gave me a lot of growth, and um, you know, and learning to pray for those who persecute me too, you know, and I still, <laughs> and I, and I, I still I still do that today, you know, and it, it, um, it. Uh, <laughs> Bless him, Lord. He knows not what he does. So, so we all, I think everyone in this room that knows what the awareness or the booking system is can relate to you. Um, but I, off the back of that, like usually if we can't, if we find it hard to receive, we find it hard to give out. Yeah. Did you have a struggle with that, with actually booking people? You know, yeah, there's the, the old saying, it's a dog act and all that talk that comes with it. So how did you, yeah. how did you sort of coincide with both of those Ab- absolutely when i when i came into the program it was like i was getting hammered with all these tickets and i'm like what is this place you know <laughs> because it's just totally foreign to me you know because a lot of the guys that i was in there with were were guys that had done jail and stuff and you know i hadn't done any jail but i'd you know gr- grown up on the street and and you know you never give your mates up and you always keep your mouth shut that's how we were brought up and um you know so it, it was a big um culture shock but um you know, I was put on a contract to um, that I had to make. I think it was five bookings. A, it was only you know something small anyway. You know, a certain amount of bookings and a certain amount of yeah. a certain amount of awareness yeah, and well. a certain amount of um, issues, a certain amount of assertions each week, and then um, that sort of um, was enough to sort of get me. Get you going. Get me going. So let me ask you: Now that you've uh, you've graduated, you work down at Transformations, yeah? Yeah. Um, but outside even of the the bubble of Transformations, how has that now benefited your life? Now that you've finished it, like what? Where are you seeing the ability to assert and, and also receive? Obviously, you just shared you pray for people like Ash. Yeah. Um, but but where else have you seen that? That was that's probably more day to day practical. Where that booking system has actually changed something in your life? Yeah. Well. Um I just, I just think my, my whole, it's changed the way I think, you know, so, um, you know, I, I don't dwell on um, negative stuff now. I'm aware of um, what I'm thinking about, you know, I think about what I'm thinking about and um, I don't let negative thoughts come into my mind anymore and, you know, I can honestly say I haven't, I haven't had the temptation to pick up a drink or a drug since I've been in Transformations. Because I, I hit that rock bottom and I believe that you need, you need to hit a rock bottom and you need to have surrendered and said, look, I've had enough, you know, and will it be willing to go to any lengths to get it. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, I still, I still struggle with being assertive sometimes, um, you know, um, with, with certain people that I know aren't going to receive it well. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you, know I just, you just do your best and you... I, you know, I always lean into God and um, whatever I went through in the program, always um, use it as a stepping stone to get closer to God. So, um, you know, I know he's with me. I know he never forsake me. And, and that's, that's, in essence, the, the program for me. Yeah, that's great. Once we realise it's not just about uh, the other person or 
or, or dobbing and you realise on the other end of it, if you will, that it's actually, it brings personal inward change for ourselves that without someone handing you a ticket, you, you cognitively, and I think uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit helps lead you into that lifestyle of just awareness of the way we are and how we conduct ourselves. That's awesome, Stu. Yeah, sure. Awesome. I think Ash, um, this one's for you. Um, you know, there's a saying, uh, and, and I think Pastor Lucas shared this for the first time, but there's a man and he walks past his house every day and, and, and outside the house is a, is a, is a porch and there's a, an old hunting dog and the, the old man's in his rocking chair and as this guy walks past, he hears the dog yelp. And, uh, and then he walks back again and he hears the dog yelp and he walks past for about a week and he keeps hearing this dog and he's like, silly dog, why is it yelping? And he asks the, the old guy, the old guy says, well, this is his spot where he lies, um, but there's a rusty nail sticking up through, through the floor. The problem is he's more comfortable lying on the rusty nail. He's scared of stepping in or going into a, a, a new spot where there's potentially uh, uh, comfort and he won't get the pain, but he stays with the pain because that's what's familiar. And, and I think one of the hard things about transformations, and, uh, and I'll ask you, Ash, how, how did you overcome this, is, is actually starting to discover um, living life and going through circumstances and situations that were unfamiliar to you from the past, and how did you deal with them? Yeah. Um, my biggest one, and I'm sure a lot of people here could relate that are in the program, like one of my biggest fears becoming a Christian I was like, oh, I don't want to be like Ned Flanders, you know, <laughs> like just some Christian more. Like, and God bless the Ned Flanders of the Christian faith, you know. But like, for me, like, you know, like I was like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, like conformed into some like, you know, crazy cult and have to like be one of everyone else, you know. And God doesn't want us to be all the same, you know. Like he wants us all to be together. But we've all got different flavors, different aspects, qualities, gifts. And yeah, like my life is like, nothing like Ned Flanders now, like, I've got the coolest life, but um, it's hard to change over, um, I know coming into the program, like, it was a miracle that I got bail, um, and I was, I was looking at seven plus years this time, and I still had court, um, and yeah, like, having to, you know, do the program and that, and I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be a mort, like, what if I go back to jail, and like, you know, like, you start to change, like, that hardness and that, but um, yeah, God just wrecked me, and yeah, more and more, um, you know, layers got broken off my life and, yeah, my court got thrown out, like my um, court proceedings got thrown out and that was a miracle. Like, I had good evidence on me and, like, I deserved to go back to jail. But um, the police didn't put evidence forward twice and it got thrown out. Um, so I thought, well, I may as well give it a go. And, yeah, even before, like, Tina wrote me that letter, like, we recommend he does the whole 12 months. I was like, oh, how am I going to get that off there? <laughs> like, I don't be stuck here for 12 months. I was weighing up a couple of years over being stuck there. Let me just ask, how many people, how many people in here have had um, the judicial system drop charges because you're in transformations? Just raise your hand. So there's about, there's about five or six hands. I reckon there's probably hundreds of people that have come through transformation, some with the uh, agenda. This is a get out of jail free card, but it's amazing that that's always a God appointment. And I just want to cut right in and say, you're not here by mistake. This isn't just a get out of jail free card, uh, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And, and, and this is just part of the evidence that he is, he is working. You know, the, the song says he's the way maker, the miracle worker. And um, yeah, awesome. That's so good. Keep going. Yeah. And um, feelings and emotions was my biggest fear. Like I had such a hard heart um, for being hurt and then having to express and, and you know, like cry. Like when um, this pastor come in, he's like, who wants to see a miracle? I was like, yeah, right. He's like, come on stage. He went up and yeah, this lady's leg got healed in front of my eyes. And I was like, what the heck? Done the altar call and um, tears just started coming out of my eyes. And I was like, oh no. I put my head down. Like I didn't want anyone to see like vulnerability and fear. No, not fear. Like, you know, there's that vulnerability. Um, and then I've just been undone. And like things have happened over the years. Like where I've had to cry and grieve, otherwise I would, I would be angry and like I'd hurt people. And I'd just go straight back to it and, you know, I'd lose. Um, to having to embrace vulnerability um, and do things differently, like with Felice and Tina, you know, like one year, like, um, yeah, got, um, yes, yeah, so I got married and it was, you know, it wasn't of God and like I pushed for it and pushed for it because I wanted to build something. Um, and then, yeah, it all fell apart and like, I was like, I'm done. I'm going back to jail. Um, and actually, my mate Troy that's here was, you know, one of the biggest um, influences in that period. He's like, 
I was sitting at the front of his house, had my car packed, and I was just going to go back to Brisbane and um, tear it up. And I was sitting in my car, and like, I was like, nah, stuff, Troy, he's a joke. You know, like, I'm not going in to say, see you later, because I knew he'd talk me out of it. And um, I, d- I was just hurting, and then, yeah, I went in, and he's like, what about me? I was like, what about you, mate? Who cares? I'm the one hurting, you know? Like, he's like, well, I'm your brother, blah, blah, blah. And then um, he got me, and I love you, Troy. But yeah, like, for one year, like, I was hammered. Like, I cried more in that year than my whole life put together. Um, and like I'd just be upstairs with Tina and Lisa just crying like every day like, I was such a baby and I had to be um, I had to be and like God walked me through it and now I'm so strong like you know and it's been years since and I've got the most amazing person in my life like you know I wouldn't change anything about her not to say that she's perfect but like it's just it's such a God thing you know and I encourage everyone to just wait you know just wait like make sure it's right get wise cancel um, yeah, and God's got the most amazing thing for each and every person here. So you reckon that probably would be the, the number one answer? Obviously, we've got God. But if you feel like, hey, I don't know if I can step into this season because of it's unfamiliar, mm-hmm. would you say what I heard was with Troy um, is getting someone else around that can help guide you, that you, you actually yeah. stay close with? Because so that's important. usually the one thing we, we, it is so important. we don't do. We push away from everyone, yeah? Yeah, and having different um, networks like... When I finished the program, um, Tina's like, you're going to life group. I'm like, no, I'm not. The boys need me, you know. She's like, you're going to life group. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, digging my heels in. Anyway, I went, and um, it was the best thing for me. Like, different networks, different people. Like, it's so important to have different communities, different friends, people. Like, if we're always around the people that we've always been around, we'll always get what we always got. But when you go around with different people, you know, that are talking about buying houses, that have got jobs and, you know, families and, like, you got to face those unbearable feelings, the shame and pain and all that. And, um, yeah, just network because I've got, I've got networks everywhere. And, like, I do the craziest stuff now and I've got friends everywhere that I can fall back on and rely on. And, you know, quality, um, I call family in my life and family as well. But, yeah, loved ones that I can just get support that I need. Yeah, so good. So we know um, Harvey Bay, you guys are partnering with Bayside. And um, when the appropriate time is right, just make sure you, you get outside, look for the pastors, look for uh, people that, that, you know, part of mentorship yeah, and, and, and accountability is, is following someone that you, you want to walk in the shoes of. Uh, you see someone for family, you want to have a family, pull on their coattails. Same with uh, presence and, and rest of the community. For my, my friend here, um, I'd ask you the question, uh, something I experienced and maybe it was just me, but I don't think so, is usually in the transition of stages, like back in the day, like, like in the olden days, we had to give up smoking at a different time to probably what they do now. And, uh, but the end of stage one, going into stage two, the, it always felt whenever you transition stages, uh, maybe two or three weeks before, it was like, there was like, it was like all hell broke loose yeah. against you. Yeah. But then also when you got into the next stage, it felt like two or three weeks after that, it was like, yeah. you'd, it was just a real struggle, which I think ties into what we just spoke about. But, but what's a tip for if someone's about to come up for a stage up or if someone's just gone in, what's some tools that you could give us that help us to continue and not just frail out? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Um, I really did struggle with staging up, you know, getting demoted, getting exited, exited, re-entered, um, stuff like that. I was always either fight or flight mode for me, you know There's what I mean? a few of us that are like yeah, that. Yeah, well, you all are. So, but for me, it seemed like whenever I had... Um, Staging up to stage one was one of the most important things for me, you know what I mean? And when that happened, I felt so much joy you know, come over my heart. But then stay a couple of weeks after stage one, and it's obviously because the, um, you know, the devil doesn't want us here, you know what I mean? Like he, he studied us for thousands of years. He knows what's going to make us tick. He's know, he knows what's going to get us exited. He knows how to get us, you know what I mean? But the number one thing that I tell the boys actually is you just got to stand firm. You know what I mean? You don't have to run. You don't have to step left, right, backwards. Just stay still. Stand still. Stand your ground. You know what I mean? And you, you, you'll overcome anything that comes your way. You know, it is possible. There's a new thousand, hundreds, I don't know how many, but of graduates out there, you know, that are living their life, you know what I mean, doing the best that they can. You know what I mean? It's not easy. The amount of times that I wanted to run, the amount of times that I did run, the amount of times that I went off at the director, the amount of times I went off at Ash. Um, but... You know, a couple of, um, it was one of my HSs back in the day, and he gave me, he printed off these three rules of transformations for me, and it was pay your rent, stay, and meeting request. And I had them up on my uh, wall for about, probably about six months, 
And every morning that I looked at that, I knew I just had to stand, stand firm, you know, stand firm with the word of God, you know, stand firm with what I believe in, you know what I mean? We've always got disordered thinking as well with what's coming up, what's happening, oh, he's um, giving me a reflection, self-will, who does he think he is, you know what I mean? But <laughs> we just got to understand that we're here for a purpose, we're here for a reason, we're doing an awesome job. Yeah. Awesome, very good. My Kiwi brother, who's rooting for the All Blacks this weekend, hey, um... Yeah, you know, so I, I probably relate to your story in, in, a, in, a, in a, a bit um, in the context of, you know, I didn't have Centrelink and all that sort of stuff at first, uh, but God makes a way. And, and so my question for you is, is for even people in the room where other people are supporting them coming into the program, usually for us, like we think we've got it all together, um, which is the reason we need transformations because we ain't got it all together. Um, but it would have been hard for you to actually uh, to receive help um, you, you know, you're a little bit more mature. Um, to s- someone else is going to pay for you, and then, and then, how did you um, lay off the? No, no, I've got to do this myself. I've got to, but actually, just just lay it all down and take the help that was offered to you. Um, yeah, it, it was um, very difficult, and um, I had a lot of fear. Um, there was fear that um, I knew that I needed to be there, um, but there was fear that I could be kicked out like I was thinking I, at any time if I make a mistake I'm going to be kicked out of this program and which I, I didn't want to do so um, in regards to uh, wanting that help it was like I was performing like I was in the kitchen at 5 30 in the morning performing to do this I was helping whenever I could just keep performing um, until uh, Process Group and uh, Tina said, we're going to put you on a working ban. Uh, I'm going to sit you up top on uh, outside the HS's room and you're going to have to journal. And, and all of these feelings just suddenly just overwhelmed because, yeah, I had to sit still. And it was like, man, I can't do this. And all of my, I just want to, I just, I don't want to live anymore because here I am. I'm, I, I just, I, this is just not good for me or anything. And then I realized um, is that, I was fearing being kicked out of this program, but the only thing that I really needed to fear was God. And when I realized that, it was like suddenly this whole weight had been lifted off me. Um, and, and so I started to, to press in and, and not be so performance orientated uh, in my program. Um, and so I don't know if that answers the question, but we've got to overcome that fear and um, know that it's only God that we need to fear and yet be obedient to what he has to say for us. Mm. Awesome. So if anyone's trying to get out of working or doing journaling, we know that you, this is where you're trying to manipulate because of what yeah. you just heard. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, for our friend down the end, uh, a question for you, and, and something that, that, that I think is hard, and whenever I have a chance to speak to the guys, uh, my language is always, nothing's changing out here, like in the context of the world. There, there might be a new song, there's a new president, or there might be. Um, there's another virus going through. Um, how did you go through the program, a- and what did you do to actually just put everything aside? Like a lot of people in here probably have families, uh, kids um, feel like we're missing out on the first steps. The f- how did you position yourself to not worry about everything that was going on the outside? And, and what is the benefit now that you see that you've gone through it and you get to spend time with your family, um, whatever that unit looks like? Um, I think when, uh, when we're out there in addiction, um, we're, we're no good to ourselves and we're no good to the others around us. And that's why it's vitally important that while we're here in the program, um, we're becoming the best versions of ourselves. And something that I always... Um, I look forward to when I have kids myself, but I tell um, for, the, for the people and the parents that do have children, the things that you are learning in here is like 40 years of life lessons just crammed into one year, and you're going to be able to um, take the things that you've learned, the skills, um, whether that's you know simple things like the assertions and the conflict resolution and... Um, uh, cognitive behavior therapy and healthy communication like these are all the things that you're going to be able to pass down onto your kids and give them the best chance like before they have to um, go through the hard struggles themselves you're already giving them the tools that they need so I think if you take a step back and you look at it um, in perspective 
um, you'll realise that what you're doing here is actually more beneficial than what you could be doing out there. Um, and this program, it really does help with the, the reconciliation between uh, families, friends and children. Um, so I think sticking it out the longer you do here, families are more likely to come alongside you and trust you and help you, um, you know, as long as you're staying on track and, and doing what you need to be doing. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think, um, I think a lot of us come in to addiction because of unhealthy relationships. A and if you're in the program right now and someone's saying, hey, you should come out, uh, that's, a, that's a red light right there for an unhealthy relationship. A and the reality is from what I see, even with families that come and they put people in the program, and I've seen young men and old men, young women, old women, and, and they're like, no, I need to get out, I need to look after the family, but, but I can tell you firsthand, the family is just praying that you'll stay in the program. They don't want you back until you are all good, because one, they care about you that much, and two, you have that plan, uh, there's a plan and there's a purpose, they want to see you walk in, uh, in healthiness, because then you can give back to the family unit. Um, I think, you know, a, a lot of us, like, there's a couple PKs up on the stage, and, uh, and, and somewhere along the line, there is an element of faith that comes in, uh, like, 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 a lot of people, I think, come into the program, like Ash, and they're like, hey, I don't know, this was a whole Christian deal, um, but I want to know, how, how, is, how is meeting Jesus, having an encounter with the Holy Spirit, how has that, um, not just the, the, the cognitive side of rehabilitation, transformation, steps, all that sort of stuff that comes with it, but how's the spiritual side helped, and what do you see the benefits of that now? Um, I think it's really interesting, because growing up in a Christian family, it's like I learnt about God, but I didn't really understand who Jesus was or what he could do for me. And um, even my dad always used to say, like, you know, I can't wait for you to give your life to Jesus. And at that time, like, my life was in a pretty good place. I was like, I don't know what you, what, what could Jesus do for me that I couldn't do for myself? And it was probably only about a week into the program that, um, and, and the information that was given to us in the first week really helped me to understand who Jesus actually was and the significance of him um, sacrificing himself on the cross for our sins. And I think it's because I had been such a sinful person for so long in addiction, I realized, wow, like I need this Jesus in my life. And I had a very, um, you know, amazing spiritual encounter where I felt that uh, liquid love and I, I gave my life to Jesus um, at a soak service. And I think after that happens and, and you learn to surrender your life to God, like it just really puts, um, it puts everything into perspective. Like you're no longer living, you know, for the outside world or, or um, outside things or other people, but you're just getting that sense of uh, purpose and direction in your life. And it can be the most fulfilling thing. And I think going through the program and having that spiritual side, um, you can tackle anything that comes your way. Like the fears that you have or the things that you struggle with the most, when you press into Jesus and look for him to the answer, like you're just, you, you'll smash it basically. Like you will get there and it will, it will get easier as well. Yeah, great. Come on, we can give her a round of applause. So good. So, bro, one of the um, one of the one of the common questions with people that have got faith, uh, especially for someone who who maybe doesn't or has had a bad experience, and then they marry together the idea of, oh, you've got faith just because you had an addiction. Uh, it's it's you know we know you needed Jesus to help you get through it, and you, know, you can get on with it. What would you say to maybe someone in the room that maybe is new to the program and and like just questioning the whole? Jesus, is this just a crutch? Is this real to get through? And, and again, in a similar context, how do you see that actually playing out in your day-to-day -day life now? Uh, for my day-to-day -day life, um, he's, I, I bring him into everything now that I do. Um, for me, when I have um, new residents come into the program, and it's like Shane Willard said yesterday, we need to meet people at where they're at. And sometimes, when, I, when most of the times when they come into the program, they will know a little bit, but they won't know a whole lot. And one of the first things I ever say to them is, um, do you have an open mind? I say, yeah, yeah, I have an open mind. Uh, do you have an open heart? 
yeah, I've got an open heart. Well, that's exactly what Jesus asks of us, to have an open heart and an open mind. And I always say, well, you're halfway there. Um, for me, um, he has been guiding me, and I might keep referring to it, he's been guiding me every step of this way along this whole journey. Um, and he's been showing me who he is in my life. Um, for me, um, and it's realizing who I, who my family was as well. Uh, like my grandfather was a Methodist minister, which I didn't even kno- sort of realize, and, and but really knew. So for me, it's about he's got a calling. It might have skipped a generation, but when God's got a calling on your life or on your family, it, that calling just doesn't go away. That calling is there. And for me now, it's like I'm doing Bible studies. I'm doing, I'm doing everything that I feel like I've always wanted to do and never had the, had the drive or the purpose or the reason to do it. But now I do. And being in a position of where I am, um, and I thank leadership because it's ab- all about trust. Like we come into this program and we got no trust at all. But when we can start to trust leadership, again, we're, we're on that next road or that next discovery to, to be able to press in and complete the program or whatever part your journey wants to be. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So good. My friend, at what stage of the program did you start to think, hey, this might actually work? Like, actually, I hope you've got there. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> No, like, like, like at what stage of the program? Was it stage one? Was it week three? Like when did you actually um, start to experience some hope? And, and what was that, that circumstance situation? What was the precursor like? For someone in here that's like, man, I just I can't seem to be getting anywhere. I don't, I don't know what. When's the breakthrough coming for you? When was it? I don't think there was a particular time or, or thing. I think it was just a, like, a, it was like a slow progression. Like, but... You know, um, it's easy for people around us to see the change. It's harder when we're actually in the program to see the change in ourselves. Um, so it's probably, you know, getting feedback from, our, from the people around us that we do life with that we are changing, um, you know. And then, you know, I realised that, you know, I was and, um, you know, just just didn't give up just a day at a time just just hung in there and just there were times there where I wanted to leave um and you know I even even made plans to leave and then I didn't and then I realized that if I just stayed I'd eventually finish the program so I made a um a conscious decision to uh that I was going to graduate and that nothing um was going to stop me from doing that and um you know um I, I, I remembered you know, the times where God had got me through situations when, when things got tough and um, and just leaned into him for strength and guidance. But, yeah, no no real light bulb moment because, I you know, I'd always believed in Jesus. I just never, I just never live, always lived the life. Um, but, yeah, I think ju- I just had enough when I'd come into the program and I, I'd made a decision. I'd, I never wanted to, to drink it or drug ever again. I love that. So it was a consistent decision right from day one. Pretty much, yeah. And everyone's different in that. I I think from a friend here, we heard that um, there were times of coming and going and and frustration. Um, But what I essentially heard you say is is I made a decision that I was going to be proactive about this. Uh, Like I got up in the morning. It it wasn't just like the program. Like I think for everyone, there's a point where you, you allow and you adapt to the program. But for me, what I heard when you said that is, no, I made a decision that I was going to get about this. Yeah. And, and so can you just speak to someone in here that maybe has just been riding and we've just been going uh, and need some encouragement to actually just change gear and now really get into yeah. all the elements of the program? Yeah. Um, I struggled with my pride um, a lot. So what I eventually did, I think I got to s- at the start of stage two, yeah, two weeks into stage two. No, it, was, it might have been three weeks down in Tassie. And... Um, I used my pride again, uh, with me, for me, you know what I mean? I turned that pride around and I was like, I'm going to graduate, you know, I need to graduate, not only f- just for myself, you know, not for, not for my family, not to prove anything, but to prove it for myself, you know what I mean? Like, it, the program's not meant to be easy, 
you're not meant to wake up and be like, yeah, I'm here, I can't wait to book. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's tiring, it's drains you. You want to come out of your stuff, you come out of your stuff, you're going to swear, you're going to disrespect people, you're going to do that. But when you can adapt to the program and let the program adapt to you, that's when you'll start to get major breakthrough. But in my honest opinion, you just got to promise yourself, you know what I mean? No matter, that's what I tell the boys, no matter what comes your way, you just got to stand still. You know, just not not run, not hide, stand still, let it come, you know, and you'll overcome it. Awesome. Yeah. So Ash, um, my mum actually met you for the first time at a prayer meeting the other week. And then she said to me, she said, well, I, Ash is a handsome boy, isn't he? <laughs> I said, mum, you're like, you're, you're you know, married. my mum, I love her. You're married and <laughs> I'm her son and that's weird. <laughs> but, um, but, but you just spoke before and, and, and I think the people who experience this, when you come into the program, um, all of a sudden, I, I, in a certain context, you're alone. Um, you're, you're slowly being undone as such. Mm -hmm. And then the program and God, uh, with help of the leadership and the other residents, build you up. But it's really easy to think, man, I need a relationship. Mm -hmm. I've got to get into a relationship. And, and often that's a default um, to cover up a continuation of the work that, that needs to happen. Um, how did you, like we heard firsthand, you're pretty uh, vulnerable with the fact that, man, you ran into something a little bit too early. What advice would you give to the guys and girls in here that might be thinking, man, I want to, mm. especially after a week of hanging out with the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, because we've all got, like, um, core values and, like, you know, dreams and stuff in our heart. And mum was, yeah, to have a, you know, have a family, um, make it work, you know, do anything to make it work, go through the challenges and stuff. And it come from a healthy place. Uh, it come from, like, I, I, it come from a good place, but it wasn't totally healthy. You know, like, I still had issues, like, a bit of codependency, um, you know, uh, I put it as an idol in my life, you know, I put it above God, and, like, I would have chucked everything out um, with it, and who knows where I'd be now. Um, yeah, but I always encourage everyone, I'm like, wait a couple of years, and even though I waited a couple of years, like, I still, like, I knew in my spirit, like, it wasn't right, and I still forced it and pushed for it, because I wanted to have a family, I wanted to, you know, go through the challenges and do this, that, and the other, and I, I wasn't even honest with people. People were like, what's wrong? And like, I refused to look at it because of what I wanted, yep. you know. Um, my heart's desires were not, you know, healthy. Like, it wasn't healthy. Um, so I always encourage people, get wise counsel, wait a couple of years, you know. Be friends first. Like, you don't have to rush into anything. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, it's, it's about being transparent in what's going on with you and that because we're raw and we want, you know, we want to be loved, we want to be accepted but we need to love and accept ourselves first before we can come into that place. Otherwise, we get our love and acceptance from, you know, broken people. Um, yeah, and then we're always at the mercy of that and just becomes unhealthy and falls apart. That's great. Mm. Uh, I'd say as well, trust you, you've got to trust your leaders. Like, I remember going to Pastor Mike's on a Sunday afternoon. Um, every part of me didn't want to go and bother them on a Sunday afternoon, Mike and Corinne. And for me, there was a situation. I graduated the program looking after the house, and, and I asked... These guys, hey, there's a couple of options here. They said, don't go with option one. You'll end up back in the program <laughs> again, uh, sort of. Um, but, but, you know, fast and pray about this and make sure it's, like, you've got to get accountability into your life. And, and let me put it this way, if, if, or say this as a further on from that, if you're going to go after accountability, um, walk that journey out with them. Um, stay close. Hold them to account that they're going to be with you in that and, and be transparent. Uh, in that, you know, when we come into transformations, I think one of the hardest things is, is even to fathom what the future looks like. Like, we all see what a future might look like through other people's shoes. But something I love about transformations is it, 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 it develops, it conjures up dreams um, and, and things in us for a future for our lives, not based on what someone else is doing, but based on, hey, I actually like doing this. I like playing this sport. I like knitting. That's weird, but you might like knitting. I don't know, like you want to have a craft store. But, but like dreams come, uh, and I think this happens when you're in transformation. So I want to ask you guys, like, uh, last question, then we'll put it out to these guys. Um, when you came in, obviously broken and lost, what are you, like, just so these guys can see, hey, what are you actually dreaming of now? What, what is possible for these guys? What's something that's happening in your world that you could say, hey, you can have this? Mm. Yes, yeah, so the last years, a lot of, like, I've done heaps of travel and that, traveled around the world and stuff, but... Yeah, making plans, um, big things are happening, you know, like next year probably buy a house and, yeah, um, 
take the relationship further and stuff. And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so there's lots of things happening. Mm. <coughs> but um, yeah, I would never have dreamed it. Like when I finished the program, I was just going to go back to building and get back in, but like I would have been in trouble. Um, but yeah, my life now, I could never have imagined that it would be so good. That's awesome. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, for me, one of the <coughs> biggest things was probably what did happen though was making amends you know with my family yeah. you know what i mean so for me that would have been one of the major especially with my dad that would have been one of the major things but now i can enjoy doing stuff clean and sober you know what i mean i can go for a walk along the beach you know yeah, what i mean awesome. like back in the day i was yeah. like what what is this you know what i mean <laughs> like but like just to go for a walk along the beach yeah. like doing that mindfulness to me is so important yeah. you know what i mean and it's still I encourage it for every single person here you know what i mean so but yeah just doing normal stuff yeah yeah so going for a bike ride going for a run going for a walk you know what i mean just getting out and about yeah it's awesome awesome yeah. same question yeah probably um restored relationships you know i've got a um, really good relationship with my son now he's 16 and um just being a positive role model for him and being able to talk to him about feelings and stuff that you know, that I wasn't taught when I was, was young, you know, we were taught, you know, big boys don't talk about their feelings, they don't, big boys don't cry, you know, and um, just being able to ask him how he feels and, and, um, and pass some of that stuff on to the next generation and also um, a good relationship with my mum now, you know, um, you know, what I put her through, through active addiction, you know, no one should ever have to go through and, you know, uh, she trusts me now and, and we have a, a positive relationship now. And, you know, um, and, and as time goes on where, you know, she's seen that I'm not relapsing because there were times in the past where I'd get time up and then I'd relapse. Um, and, you know, so, you know, words mean nothing. It's actions speak louder than words, you know. So yeah, awesome, man. Great. Yeah, just like Stuart, um, very much it's about uh, restoration um, for me, for uh, my sons and my uh, daughter. Um, you know, I d destroy, we, we destroy a lot of that relationship and stuff like that. So for me, it's uh, family is really important. Um, I'm going to be uh, going back to New Zealand in December. Um, and, um, you know, a restoration with my dad who... Um, He's 80 years old now, and um, we're going to be doing a spiritual journey back home to his um, his birthplace, um, and to take that in, which I've never been interested about in my whole life. Uh, but now um, there's just a different meaning in my life now. Um, and so when I come back, I'm going to be um, coming back down here to the Gold Coast, um, and uh, Pastor Mike has um, offered to uh, mentor me uh, as well. So. Like, I, I, I believe that I'm distinctively different and my story will be able to touch a lot of people and be able to lead, uh, lead them uh, just to be a vessel for God. And I didn't know how that was even going to come, uh, come around. Uh, like, I have this uh, vision of myself being able to travel the world. Obviously not now at the moment, but that's just the grounding for me to stay oh. back here and to learn what I need to learn yeah, to great. take it out to the world and to bring people to him Come on. Um, and just, just lead him back. And I never thought that was going to be possible for my journey, um, but God makes a way and he makes everything possible. So, yeah, I'm looking for I'm just so excited. I love so that. Excited. I feel goosebumps. Like, like initially you said, like, Essentially, you kind of said I was like homeless. I'm from New Zealand and I was brought into a program and now you're saying, man, I'm going to the world. Um, so you know who you are and you know where you're going. And, uh, and, and it's a big vision. Uh, so good, man. That's awesome. Um, I had really poor friend choices um, before I came into the program. So I think a huge thing for me is being able to connect with the right kind of people so that are um, uh, beneficial for my life. And um, I've been able to do that um, through life group of all places, actually. It was a great life group. And, um, yeah, like I have, I've got friends now, of these um, uh, wonderful girls that just bring such joy um, and fun into my life. And it's, it's good, clean fun. And I don't have to be worried about being led astray. And, um, and I know that, you know, they're always going to have my best interest at heart. So that's been a massive, um, massive thing in my life. And 
also, like, I just, I'm really looking forward to getting back um, into my nursing. And for the health profession, if you've been out of it for a long time, it can be really difficult um, to get back in. And I've always been um, really worried that uh, who's going to hire um, a nurse that's previously been a drug addict and who's been to rehab. And that's something where I've really got to put my uh, faith and trust in God and, um, and lean not on my own understanding, but pray that God will open the right doors and that um, the right place um, will have me. So that's it. Brilliant. Pass the mic. Pastor Justin. You had a few goes at the program. And uh, tell me... What was the, the most fun time, explosive, in, share us a little bit of the story, like um, you had a few kind of pretty um, dramatic exits and things, and uh, <laughs> what was your shortest stay first, what was your shortest stay in transformations? Yeah, I think um, I, I begged Mike to let me into the program, I was living down the road, and um, I didn't want to talk about this bro. <laughs> um, but hey, while we're here, um, so You're I was, on the panel, I was, bro, I was living so down the road, you know. and I was um, and like I like I just had a habit as we all did of pushing boundaries. I called them, and I'm like, dude, I haven't been <laughs> clean, but I need to get back in the program. And, and I think that's what I love about transformations. Like every time I called, um, somehow I managed to get Mike and not Bennett or Ari or one of the like the real like stick to the rules people. But Mike was like, okay, um, I should have said that. But uh, he, ca I came in, I came into the night service. I brought all my stuff to the night service and uh, I got back to the house, the White House, and I patted the dog. And then got to about 10 o'clock, I'm like, what the hell am I doing here again? And uh, I literally jumped the fence. Um, <laughs> I, I locked the gates, I didn't have a key, so I threw my bags over it. And then I like walked up through surfers with my bag, with my head between my toes. That was so that was your shortest, shortest yeah, day? about five hours, including church, so probably three hours in the house. Uh, and, um, you know, you had, you had a few issues um, with a, a bit of a provocative uh, leader at, at, at the time. Now, I, remember, I remember one time when you, uh, you, you had a moment there at the centre. I, I remember patching up a door with some, uh, you know, some plaster like that. Something, something happened there. Tell us about that one. Nah. Nah, so, oh, mate, I don't know how to do it without, like, glorifying or near graving. Um, no, it's funny, bro. So I, no, so, it's so where Mike, you are today. It's about where you are today. These guys could sit here and go, you know, I can make mistakes. And, and you heard all of this, don't quit, right? The biggest thing, don't quit. And, um, and, and that's the thing, like, Justin is the, the picture of perseverance, 12 cracks at the program. And now he's the pastor of this incredible church and 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 God's God's gracious you know so 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 it's fun talking about the uh, good old days you know. so um yes yeah, so, uh, you were overseas I think there was three times that I left the program out of those 12 right and and many of them I was kicked out and I didn't leave <laughs> probably shouldn't have been but I did I went and I came back still, um, still got a few issues still few, yeah, yeah, yeah issues crews um, fairies. No, so, so Mike was overseas, and, and, and when, when the coverings lifted, I think, um, especially with these guys, at that stage, it was early, there wasn't all the other campuses, um, but as soon as the covering was lifted as such, to want of a better expression, um, it, you, you could just feel, again, it was, like, it was like, mate, there was all sorts of temptation. Look, there's a, there's a provocative, I've got to be careful, is this strange? So, um, so he comes to our church now, he's back, um, Ari and uh, Ari Dannenberger. You know, um, it's interesting because when I, I got deported from New Zealand, so when I arrived here, I thought, I'm not doing rehab. That was one of the conditions. Um, I was going to talk more about that tonight. But look, I, I arrived, and when I actually ended up in the program, I opened up this file that my mum gave me, and it was, it said, Ari Dannenberger, house leader, Bennett Kane, um, Mike Barrett, director, and it was the first time I'd ever seen that. So I guess I'll say that off the back of that. If you're here, it's because God wants you here. Um, even when I tried to divert the whole course, uh, and hadn't opened up and got directions for where I was meant to be. God brought me here anyway. Um, but Ari, look, Ari, Ari was, he might have been right, he might have been wrong. Ari brought, oh, mate, He developed your character, didn't he? I think about he it. He developed your character. He developed my character, and he still does when I preach to him at the back every <laughs> Sunday, knowing that he's in the room. So Ari, look, look, what happened was I was in stage one, 
And I went to stage two, and we were still allowed cell phones then when we got to stage two. So I had like a cool little flip phone. I thought I was the man. And uh, really had no one to call, but still one of my phones. So then I got demoted. Uh, and it was, mon- oh no, it was Tuesday courses. No, Monday courses. Uh, and because I was, it was work therapy, put me back to, to assessment, so I had to go and do the courses again. It's kind of cool because I got out of work therapy. But then uh, when I went to the courses, Ari realised I still had my cell phone that he hadn't taken off me at Issues Group. So I was like, that's your fault, that's not mine. Right. <laughs> I should get to keep my right. cell phone. Come on. And remember, I'm like 25 at this stage, yeah. I'm like 40 now. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was right as far as I was concerned. And, um, and so... Like, I held my phone. I went, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to go to the course. I'm going to keep my phone. And, and let's just pretend nothing's happening. And, and we'll talk about this when Mike gets back from America. And um, which was a few weeks later. So, look, I went back into the course. And Ari chased me through the whole of um, Monaco Street Centre. And to the point he got in my face. And I was calm. I was calm. I was calm. And then, like, I just lost it. And I looked at Ari, and then Ari just started running through the centre. <laughs> I threw my phone at him, smashed it on the wall. I think that was the hole in the wall. And then I eventually caught him where the washing machine is, and I had him pinned up. And, and that's where the old nature... Like, like I was never tough. I thought I was, and because I grew up around South Auckland, you kind of had to be. Like, we just... We always used to scrap, and that was a defence mechanism. And it just about came out, um, and I think I punched the wall in anger, and a few of the boys said stop, leave, and then uh, Pastor Richard came down, um, I'd been kicked out, he came down and pulled me back into the room, um, Pastor Richard was the pastor here with Kent, um, and Pastor Richard said, don't let the sun go down on your anger, and I'm like, I'm not angry anymore, but then Ari's like, you're still not coming back, so um, so that that was probably like one of the, like I shouldn't have done that, but I was still <laughs> angry and learning, um, but hey. I think it's fun. You asked the question. I always just look back, you know, like I, I mean... You know, sometimes, here's the deal, like, you, you can never work out, you can never judge and say, oh, well, that, that person's beyond redemption, you know, and I, I, remember, I remember someone said to me, like, oh, you need to give up on that guy, he's, he's from the devil, you know, yeah, no, God sends some people and then the devil sends some too, you know, because Justin would always leave in a blaze of glory, <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and, and, then, and then, you know, lo and behold, now, you know, and so I just think, yeah, I, I, all glory to God. I just, I just wanted the guys to just feel, hear a little bit of your humanity and everything, but you're amazing now. I'm so proud of you, bro. Thanks, bro. Come on. I wish we had some stories of Mike Barrett's rehab days. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could tell some stories. <laughs> no, so hey, what we want to do now, um, hey, can we give these guys a round of applause? Stay up here with me. <coughs> no, I, um, I, I think it's significant anyone that actually finishes the program, anyone that does the year, the two years, over five years, however long it takes. Um, we all walk out with the same foundation and, and really um, I, think, I think one of the keys is when you transition out of stage four to stay close um, and, and stay involved for a season until God really gives you a vision and puts the right people around you. Um, but I, I want to ask, are there any questions in the room um, for these guys uh, that you have? Um, maybe you're here and you're going, hey, I don't know, how am I going to deal with this? What should I do about this? I don't know. Any questions at all? Uh, we've got a couple of minutes, so um, looking around, someone. Is that a hand or is that a scratch? Awesome. Marlene. Can um, uh, Katie? Can you run the mic? We'll give here. We'll give. We don't need a mic. Pass the mic and Corinne, maybe you guys want to answer that. Just just for people that are wondering.
And to be, to be quite frank, Marlene, women are a lot more flippin' complex than men. <laughs> I walk out of those women's process groups with a couple extra grey hairs on the side of my head. <laughs> nah, I enjoy it. But women, women tend to like not stay on as much, so when you do get like a woman um, house supervisor like Shani and Jess stand on, they're like gold. Not that the boys aren't, but it's like when you've got a woman that's gonna stay on, put aside their dreams, you know, kids and family, and, you know, sacrifice that time. Yeah. It's like gold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, women leaders are hard to come across. Now, one other thing is that um, women's emotions are mixed into everything they do. <laughs> Men aren't. Men could step one, out of one box and into another box. They've forgotten about the box they were just in. Yeah? And, and men can think about nothing. <laughs> women can't. I know you women can't understand that, but men can literally think about nothing. You say, what are you thinking about? You go, nothing. <laughs> women can't get that. <laughs> okay, question. Yeah, I, what I've found over the last 10 years with women and before that, prior to that, is that a lot of women have a lot of outside issues. Uh, men tend to be the, the men that, ha well, it's not that they don't want to leave their family, but they're the ones that leave their families. So a lot of women actually have families and children that they've got to look after. And that's a really a strong pull emotionally for women to actually, I, I want to be with my children. I want to get my children and that's the biggest pull that they have or you know I've got to go away and leave my children you know while somebody else looks after my children to come into recovery so that's the bit worst thing uh, that I've found over the last 10 years just working with the women is that biggest pull it's hard for us to get them in a lot of these men are fathers but they don't have the same role or I'm not saying they don't still love their that maternal instinct that they just want to be with their children. Uh, yeah, I just had a question for Alex, I guess. Um, of um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, we, 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 we kind of work on a lot of different things while we're here. And I was just um, curious, when you look back at your time in, in transformations, is there one thing that you felt like 
you could have worked on harder or you could have spent more time on. Um, or if you could do it over again, you would have focused more energy on this one area than some other areas? Yep. Or, uh, no? Yeah, so for me, um, at the start of my program, I was always trying to get to that next level, that next stage, and I was um, focusing on that a bit too much instead of looking at the, the whole background of that stage, in my honest opinion. So when I did assessment for the third time, I got something out of that assessment class that I didn't get out the first, sec the first or second time. You know what I mean? So I think there's a point where we all, in every single class, that's why there's the um, reflections of disruptive and stuff like that. Because you've got, to, you've got to give it all. You know, there's so much cram packed into one year. There's not enough time to be mucking around. You know what I mean? Like, there's still a time and a place, as I tell you guys, but we've, always, we've just got to give it 100%. But definitely my, um, to answer your question, definitely my, um, what is it, probably identity. You know, my identity in Christ, you know, that was one of the main reasons I went to Tassie and to find out who I am without any, any, uh, any other input, you know what I mean? So to find out who I truly am in Christ, and we're still all learning that daily. I'm still on a journey myself. Mm. You know what I mean? But to keep focusing and understand what the Word of God says about me, you know, truly means so much. Yeah. I love what you said earlier about, um, about um, just, just staying and, and, and getting through what you need to get through. With my wealth of experiences, Mike just pointed out, um, whenever you leave and come back, the issue that you left with yeah. will always be the first thing that you encounter when you yeah. come back. And it's usually not until you cross that bridge or deal with that, whatever, for want of a better expression, that demon, whatever it is, um, it, it'll just keep coming back. But when you persevere, it's like stage up on Mario Brothers. It's like, cool, we can go to the next stage. And whenever you die, you just always come back to that place. You are not going to die. Yeah. But w have you found that? Yeah. <laughs> All day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I came back on my 21st birthday. Tina and Ash brought me back, and Lisa brought me back on my 21st birthday. And I wasn't coming back, no flipping way. You know what I mean? I, w I was coming down to the Goldie, and um, yeah, didn't have good plans, didn't have good intentions, not to the campus, but um, yeah, um, after I had that meeting, and I was still using, I went down and used, and um, when I had that meeting, it was in the case management room with Tina and Ash, and I'm pretty sure Le Lisa was there. And they gave me that, um, that chance. I knew it was, at that point, it was pretty much, I don't know, 80, 20 of staying out there. You know what I mean? My pride still got in the way. I knew that I didn't, I didn't want to commit. You know what I mean? I didn't want to, I didn't want to trust. Um, I struggled with trust issues. You know, I'm sure as we all do. But for me to just come back in and for them to speak that love over me and to just see the potential, honestly means so much. Yeah, you know so good. I mean? So yeah. That's awesome. Any other questions? Gretchy. So what's the reason yeah, good, you stayed? Good, good question, Gretchy. Um, transformation saved my life. You know, if I if I was wasn't in the program, I didn't do the program, I would be dead. You know, and so I owe tra transformations my life. So, um, you know, I've laid down my life for transformations, and I I get enjoyment out of helping others. You know, um, there's 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 a saying in AA. You know, you. The, the best way to get out of yourself is to go and help someone less fortunate than, you, than, than yourself. So um, I haven't got time to be thinking about my own problems. You know, I'm looking after, you know, every, you know, stuff, people in the, in the program, you know. So um, it keeps my mind um, busy and it keeps my mind off, um, off idleness, you know. So, you know, and, um, you know, I, I really, uh, I really love the guys, you know, and, you um, you know, there's a great, um, you get great satisfaction out of seeing the guys change and, and, and moving forward in the program. We've got two awesome houses at the moment. You know, the guys have stayed, the houses are almost full and, you know, the boys' house has, is and has been now for a couple of months, you know, and it hasn't been like that since I've been in the program, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, there's a healthy culture in the house and, and it's, it's a really, really... Um, 
Yes, yeah, good, good work, Alex. You know, it's. Um, yeah, I hope that's answered your question, Gretchen. And, and I, I enjoy working with dysfunction. Like I enjoy working like with chaos and that. Um, and that's every day. Like I'm an extremist. I come from extreme. You know, in the world, when I was back in addiction, I was a lunatic. And so now I deal with lunatics and like, in a sense, like I get <laughs> some of that adrenaline from them. But I also enjoy seeing people get set free. Like this is the prison, you know, and I just wasted my life and my potential. Like I just wanted to die. Um, I had no hope. And then to get hope and then give others hope and be like, you know what, like speak to the dry bones. Like, you know, you, you've got dry bones in your life, but they can come alive and this can be your life, you know. And give them hope and, you know, passion for life. There's, um, there's times when, you, when you're going through and you're doing this, this program. And for me, uh, a telling uh, p part of uh, this journey for me was uh, last week when, I think it was last week, maybe a couple of weeks ago, when we had our graduation in Harvey Bay. And there was um, seven men and, and Jess up there uh, that were uh, graduating. And I looked up and I felt so proud because I had given something to each and every one of those people, just like Ash had given to me and everything. So that's for me was just so rewarding and it was the fruit of everything that I wanted to be able to do was to give back and what transformations had given to me. And I hope the next journey for these young men and women is the same because I, I, I hope that I've given them a little bit of fruit that they can then transfer that onto somebody else. Why did you hang around? Why did you hang around and not just do the bolt and go nursing? Um, it was actually something Lena <coughs> said to me. Because um, originally I thought about doing employment and going back to nursing, but Lena actually said um, uh, there's so much growth in doing HS or um, like staying on doing the resident leader. And I knew for my kind of personality that I needed that extra push. I'm not a natural born leader, I'm more of a follower, and to actually step up and um, start being assertive, start, um, start setting boundaries and, um, and leading by example, and then um, in turn, like Hwani said, you start to see the fruits of what you're doing, and it's just honestly, it feels like such a blessing to be able to be in a position of um, being a servant of God and just helping his people, helping them to see who he really is. And um, yeah, it's just it's just super rewarding to be able to help people. Yeah, so good. Um, <coughs> the uh, we have a couple of questions from online, so we'll let the on online Hobart Melbourne. Um, the first one is um, from um, Transformations Hobart, and they really want to know what's stuck on the top of Botchel's lip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, so uh, if you didn't hear that, Ashley said, look out, because he's, he's coming there soon. So, um, All right, um, uh, but uh, Monica asked uh, a question. What was the best part of your program? What was the best part? Uh, for me, definitely graduation, because, um, <laughs> you know... I, I, you know, I, I'd never achieved anything in my life, you know, I failed at everything, you know, I never got my apprenticeship, I never, you know, I, except for drinking and drugging, you know, I, I was, um, you know, I, I achieved well there, but, you know, it, it, it just, it just took, it just took me downhill, you know, and it took me to the gutter, so to, to com actually complete something, um, and to get, to get that eagle at the end, you know, there was a, a real sense of achievement, so, um, yeah, that's... Right. Yeah, for me, um, it would be probably the restoration with my dad and my sister. You know, when I was in Tassie and they, um, and they came down and saw me, you know, at the end of it, I was, I was in tears. I didn't even know what was going on. Like, I remember speaking to one of my mates, Bo, and um, I just walked up the stairs and I was like, what's going on here? Like, you know what I mean? Like, tried to push it away, but like, I promise you, I was trying with every inch in me to get rid of those tears. I couldn't do mm. it. You know what I mean? So that restoration with my sister and my dad, is unbelievable right. to where two weeks ago my sister asked me to babysit her house mm -hmm. and I was like what's going on there that trust yeah. has 
that's all I've ever wanted. Awesome. You know, and I said it on my grad and yeah, that relationship now, it's to the point where they text me every hour, it's still my head in, you know what I mean? Like, I love them, but no, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, mine uh, would definitely be restoration with my family as well. Like, I've got such a beautiful family and I put them through hell. That and um, like I'm talking about it tomorrow, um, the ability to forgive myself, like because I've done terrible things in addiction. I've hurt a lot of people and just lived this selfish, chaotic life. And yeah, it's probably like about six months in, just the ability to like, yeah, receive forgiveness, but to forgive myself. It's definitely a pivotal moment in my um, recovery. But yeah, I'll share more about that tomorrow. Uh, yeah, again, it's uh, restoration with my, my children, uh, my daughter, and uh, I've got now two beautiful granddaughters out of it, and um, I know if I hadn't um, have come into the program, I wouldn't have that relationship with her. Um, and also with my two boys, you know, one of them uh, didn't even want to speak to me, didn't even want to talk to me, uh, but now he's, um, he's messaging me and I'm talking to him. So restoration is just a huge part of what we can gain out of this recovery and that we have. Yeah. Um, mine was uh, either right at the start or right at the end. Uh, right at the start is when I gave my life to Jesus and that was um, one wow. of the best things yeah, that great. ever happened. And otherwise it was right at the end and it was probably one of the hardest things that actually happened as well. But um, when I was in stage four, acting HS and um, all the girls in the house uh, exited, they left, and I was, yeah, I mean, what do you do in stage four when you're two years senior and how many girls? But um, fortunately, um, it did give me the opportunity uh, to start the house afresh, and it was literally probably one of the best things that's happened, and um, just seeing it develop and blossom um, over this year, um, awesome. it's just been incredible. Awesome. What? Woo! <laughs> awesome, Jeff. That's great. Uh, one, la one last question just from me personally, because I'm interested, right? And we're just, just one thing, right? What was the part of the program in the whole thing that you got the most growth out of? Can it be a person? It well, it, can, it w will always be a person, right? Obviously, it's personalised, but just what group, what part of the program do you feel like boundaries boundaries great okay feelings group feelings group cbt's <laughs> stage three stage three want to be um yeah getting pumped with awarenesses or um just having tina up there see you down well pass it justin what did you, what did you get the most out of i think um i think to be honest issues and, and why? Um, you asked what was the, someone asked what was the, um, the thing you enjoyed the most. And the first thing that came to my mind, apart from going to the beach every day, was, was there was a point where I decided that I wasn't going to respond and I was just going to listen, even if I disagreed, which, which I should have done 12 times ago. <laughs> but I remember s physically sitting in that meeting of issues group, and I think it was you running it, and, and every part of me wanted to get angry and defend, but I stopped. And when I walked away, I had the ability to then process what... 20 people were saying about yeah. me in the room and I realised 20 people probably weren't wrong. <laughs> and at that point, Issues Group actually became like something I look forward to wow. because I knew if I just listened, I could go away and better something in myself. That's great. And I tried every other way, so it was the best way. That's Issues awesome. Group. So good. Big hand for these guys. Uh, so...